Hello everyone, welcome to the last session of the summit 2020. We're closing with the session and we will be moving on to the pub right after this one, our virtual pub. I am, uh, we're joined by Petra and Thomas who are going to run us through some Python automation. Go, go, go. Hi, so I really appreciate all of you being here. Um, I'm just going to share my screen now to um, put my presentation up. And okay, can everyone see my screen? Yes. Yes. But your yes. voice started to break up. You might want to uh, close the video so that you have the best bandwidth for the audio. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, cool. And you want people to ask yes. questions? Uh, how is my question? voice now? Yes, it's good. You want people to ask questions and jump in? Yes. Um, so please do. Um, Yes, yes, absolutely. Um, it, me and Tom will try and um, answer all the questions that we can. Um, so please do interrupt um, while we're talking. So I just wanted to say welcome to um, a little bit, a session with a little bit of Python. Um, we are not here to give you like, you know, some loads of code examples or something, but we are here to just kind of give you a little guide um, how you can use Python as a tool to automate some tasks in security. Um, so in order to start doing all of these tasks, you don't really have to be a developer. Um, when I started doing these tasks, I knew very basic Python. Um, so I learned and grown with doing these scripts. And it's a great way actually to learn Python because um, you're doing this to make your life easier. So you have a great motivation to do it. Um, and at the same time, you know, you're, you're like Googling stuff, you're going through Stack Overflow, you're looking troubleshooting, looking at other people's solutions. So, um, you know, if, you, if you're just starting to do Python, it's a great way to do this. Um, I just want to know uh, how many people here actually know Python? You can yeah. use the yes, no uh, buttons on the participant window. Okay, we have how many? Four, four people. One, it's four good. people. Four people okay. said yes, one people said no. Okay, cool. All right. So, um, yeah, um, as I said, I'm also like quite at beginner level, but I can do these little scripting things. So I'm going to try and give you like guidance where you can start, how you can start doing all of it and how I've done it. And Thomas will kind of, he's, you know, he's more experienced with it. So he'll be able to give you some more sophisticated answers if you have questions and, you know, show you some other ideas. Okay. So um, for, sorry, I'm just trying to get onto the new slide. So for those who don't know me, um, I'm Petra. Um, working in Glasgow as a productivity engineer. I started recently blogging on Medium. Uh, I used to be a doctor. Uh, so on the right hand side, you can see um, a slide from my PowerPoint when I was going to the interview. So I used to be a doctor, uh, emergency medicine. Now I'm a master's <laughs> student in information security digital forensics. I also play volleyball. Um, I'm really enthusiastic about this whole Python journey and uh, I'm a DevSecOps enthusiast. Yeah. So we still see the yeah. first slide. Um, the can you hear me? Slide. We can hear you, but I think there is some lag between, uh, between some stuff. I don't know, uh, because we're still seeing the automating board. Okay. Why don't... If Thomas has okay, I've, I've turned presentation. off my slideshow. Maybe that will help. If Thomas has the same presentation. Yeah, um, yeah but I, I will could. get, the thing is, I will get. 
Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, maybe if, but then I will I will get to some demos. Um, so maybe can, stopping. Actually, stopping can everyone share? see my screen? Like, it's pixelated. Yeah, pixelated. Um. What the the share screen? Mm hmm. Okay his slideshow and when I get to the demo part um, we can try again how about that it's okay. much better and with the other thing voice. I can yeah um, the other Hello. thing I can yeah Tom if you share my your, uh, your PowerPoint yeah is that okay We haven't seen anything yet. Nope. Uh, uh, I think what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and find a better spot in the house. Um, How's that? Okay, that is good. Uh, Very good. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, um, I'm just going to try and find a better spot in the house for this. So maybe that um, I can. Karain, can I use your room? Okay, I'm just intruding into other people's rooms right now. Okay, um, how about I try again? Because I have to give some demos anyway. So, um, how about I just try? Is that okay? Okay, yeah. go ahead. All right, so Thomas, if you stop sharing your screen for me, please. Sorry about this, I really apologize. No worries. And I will try again and let's see what happens because maybe it will be better here where I'm really, really close to the window. Okay, can yeah. you all see my screen? Let's give it a few seconds because currently it is pixelated. Hmm. Or another thing might be dialing in with audio and showing your screen from your laptop. Um, so you mean dialing uh, in like my voice? <laughs> Holy, that sounds what like... You, what was... Yes, dialing in with your voice and using the, the video from the... The computer. So the video from the computer and my voice from the uh, phone. Okay, um, yeah. let's do this. Hi. Uh, so I'll be talking about using Pulumi for uh, automating simple tasks in uh, AWS, uh, Google Cloud, Azure, uh, essentially. Uh, any cloud platform uh, using Pulumi. So, oh, sorry, I'll skip these. Uh, so that's Pulumi. Uh, a little bit about myself to give some introduction. Uh, I, I essentially have close to zero security experience uh, apart from the Open Security Summit. So the last couple of weeks that allowed me to essentially deep dive into the problems the security uh, in IT essentially faces. So there was a lot of buzzwords going around and uh, a lot of laws that I wasn't really aware of beforehand. Uh, I'm also an employee at Glasswall. So I was a junior core developer for two years. And then I eventually moved up to a core, core developer for two months and then got into a junior SRE role. So I managed to gain back the SRE, uh, uh, sorry, gain back the junior position. Um, and below is the contact details if you want to reach out for me. Uh, okay, so what is Pulumi? It's essentially infrastructure as code. So whatever in infrastructure you want to deploy onto your cloud service, uh, you can do through code. Uh, what Pulumi allows you to do is to write in essentially your favorite language. So if you're familiar with Python, you can deploy code through that language, Go, C-sharp, JavaScript, uh, TypeScript. 
Uh, it also enables software developers to write code without having to learn another data, data format. So before when I was a core engine developer, I wasn't too familiar with YAML, but since I moved to SRE and learned about uh, CI CD pipelines, I had to learn I, uh, uh, about what YAML was. Uh, do you have Zoom? Pulumi also allows you to use uh, multiple clouds within the same code. Uh, and also, there's a little joke I thought I'd put in. It's not a Nando side order. It's not, it's not a Lumi. <laughs> uh, so one of the questions we oh, want to... Oh, you moved on slides? Because yeah. we're only seeing the, the, the main Lumi one. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was going to ask. <laughs> Technical difficulties everywhere. Uh, is, has it changed? No, I think we're in the other screen where you have the PowerPoint. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this this one. Is it visible like this? I could just yes. present it like this. Yeah. Oh, yeah. awesome. Yeah. Uh, so one of, the, one of the questions we wanted to ask was, how can Polymi help with security? So. We want to essentially automate all the boring stuff that you can do uh, security related with Pulumi. Uh, so starting off with Pulumi, uh, all you have to do is visit the website, uh, download, uh, download some binaries. So uh, a pack, for example, like a package manager on, uh, uh, for example, Chocolatey. You can do Chocolatey install Pulumi and then it's installed onto your machine. And then the following command, you can use Pulumi new, and that will create a template, uh, template folder containing everything that you require to, to have your first uh, Pulumi deployment. Within that, within that Pulumi deployment, you have a main function. And from that main function, what it will do is deploy a simple S3 bucket. Then you can choose you can choose your language beforehand, whether it's AWS, Azure, uh, I believe Alibaba is one of them, uh, the list goes on, but essentially all the cloud providers that you want to have deployed, uh, you can use. Uh, so what this does is deploys a uh, S3 bucket called my bucket onto AWS. Uh, I would show you a practical example, but I've, I've had so many uh, projects going on this morning that uh, there's been a lot of failures so I don't want to overshadow what what Pulumi can do over what everything that I've managed to ruin this morning <laughs> uh, but as soon as you have this simple uh, this simple main function all you have to do in your command line is run Pulumi up now what Pulumi up will do is essentially preview what what your code will look like in in a demo uh, cloud environment and then if that's all successful or if it's not successful uh, it will it will display uh, whether it has been created if there's any updates to run uh, or if or if it simply failed um, and that's that's why I essentially enjoy with Pulumi uh, is that when I create github action all I have to do is run uh, install the binaries and then Pulumi up and then that's essentially everything deployed onto my cloud environment. So what essentially our journey, uh, my journey with Pulumi was uh, when I started uh, at Glasswall using uh, cloud environments, uh, we essentially had been using Boto3 in order to deploy everything that we required but then that wasn't very stable. So then we went on a journey to find out there's, there's this uh, service called uh, cloud formation. So we bang, began to use that and that was really helpful. And then the next day there was an SRE uh, presentation on Pulumi and that helped in, in understanding essentially what like, it, this is infrastructure as code. It's it's built for reliability, not just using Boto three to deploy everything that you require for uh, for your cloud. Uh, so here's a few uh, code snippets that I think really represent what what you can do with Balumi. So 
because Pulumi is in Python, you're able to do everything that you would normally do in Python. So for example, in this code snippet, within main.py, I've created a function that will read a YAML file called cis.yaml. Um, from from cis.yaml, there's a series of, of deployments that you would use on CloudFormation, but I thought this would be a great demonstration to show what Pulumi can do instead of having 2,000 lines of YAML, have maybe 100 lines in, in Python, which really condenses and helps with readability. Uh, so the next code snippet is essentially doing what it did before with reading the YAML to then being able to filter and say, I just want to deploy metric filters. So as you can see here, I created a log group. Uh, this is one way of logging in Pulumi. So Pulumi.loginfo and then the string, followed by looking for every single item within the YAML and seeing if the type is a metric filter. And then what that would do is make a metric filter through this function. Um, again, all you have to do with Pulumi is just import, use the classes, and if you want, you can use any debugging tools uh, such as logging. Uh, so what this looks like after you do Pulumi run is you would have then the log group, CIS compliance log group, which we created before in here. So cloudwatch.log group, followed by the name. It's deployed onto AWS. I again, like I would <laughs> I'd love to give a real demo, but I've, I've broken so much this morning that uh, I don't want to overshadow the power of Polymia uh, because of that. Um, and then the six metric filters that I distinguished from the YAML file uh, having been deployed onto AWS. Uh, another powerful thing that I thought was really good with Polymia is you can enforce policy by testing. So, for example, if if your EC2 instance uh, needs to have uh, needs to not have the SSH open to the internet, you can test that every single deployment for an EC2 instance has SS, uh, does not have SSH enabled. So this, the sky's the limit with what you want, what you would like to enforce with your cloud environment, essentially. Another great thing about Polymia is it has great documentation. Uh, I'll just I'll unshare my screen because I think I'm showing the PowerPoint. Uh, and then share, just share my screen. Are you able to see the Pulumi website? Yes. Yeah. So the great thing about Pulumi is it has a wide range of documentation because it's quite new. Uh, there's not much on Stack Overflow and other resources you might typically look on, uh, but it's just well documented in my personal opinion and you can find anything that you would like. So scrolling towards the bottom, I'm going to APIs and then you see a list of every single cloud provider that you want to use uh, and it has documentation for all of these. Uh, going to AWS, uh, you have a list of all the modules that uh, you can deploy with. So you have an S3 bucket, you have Route 53, uh, EKS, uh, so on and so forth, DynamoDB. Uh, going into S3, uh, if you want to create a bucket resource, uh, create bucket policies, bucket objects, you can do. So going into a bucket, uh, we can see documentation on how to use it with the varieties of the languages. So with Python, uh, this is just a code snippet of saying import Polymi, import AWS. And then this is what it takes to uh, create a bucket within Polymi. Um, and you have so many variations with, if you want to use cores, this is the setup that you need to uh, write in your, in your code. Uh, and again, you got the red stars, which will tell you this, this is required. Uh, the inputs that you may need. Uh, so you, if you want the name of the bucket, uh, you can input that. Uh, you also have outputs, which is also helpful with uh, 
whatever it is you want to uh sorry uh, with whatever it is that you want to uh gain from having that 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 particular uh resource deployed so if there's a unique id that's been applied to it you can output that and use it in in another in another script um yeah and palumi palumi is free to use so uh you can get cracking with it uh there's a there's a getting started guide so uh, if you want to use aws as your as your cloud provider then again it's really well documented so you can just follow what's what's uh what's on this screen and then it's essentially as simple as doing palumi new which will create that new environment and then pulling me up, which will deploy onto the cloud. Uh, yeah, and then here's a few useful links for pulling me. Uh, should you intend to use it? Uh, yeah, that's that's okay. essentially my intro into pulling me. We, when you were talking, we actually missed the slide where, which had your face and your information. Oh, you? <laughs> this one. Yeah, so oh. we can reach you on um, LinkedIn. Yep. And at your Glasswall um, email. Yep. Okay. Thank you. No problem. I, ha I, I have some questions about this. Yeah. I mean, I love Lumi and I'm, 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 I'm kind of programming every language. Uh, Python is very useful for sure. Um, did you even think about using Terraform in the first place, or is, was just a I don't know. Did, did you want experience uh, about the programming or the tool itself? Uh, so with Polybi, uh, th this wasn't a decision that I made. Uh, the SRE team essentially, uh, I think they used Terraform in the first place, but deploying to Azure was very problematic for them. So then they they went on, wait, went on a journey to find uh, a tool that would be more more reliable and something that not only they can use, but as as people are onboarded, they could use Palumi as well, since they could use the language that they use and more are more familiar with, such as Python. Cool. Yeah, makes sense. Um, the other thing that I that I don't know, maybe Petra is going to to talk about this is this this kind of the security part. Mm -hmm because uh, one of the things that I see here is that uh, creating a bucket is really easy, but creating a secure bucket is a different thing, right? You will want encryption and login and so on. So there is some certain defaults that you will want from this. And yeah. I would expect that for creating kind of a security. I mean, you can test it afterwards using CIS or also PyTest if you're using Python, but uh, I don't know if I might, might be just things that Petra is going to answer afterwards. Yeah, so I will, um, can you hear me? Yep. Yes. Cool. So I will um, talk a little bit more um, about the security part. Um, so that this is where we missed because I didn't go first. Um, so the context would be um, basically the AWS security benchmark. Um, and I will get to it. So um, if there's no more questions for Tom, I will start sharing my screen. I'm in my garden, so hopefully this will work now. <laughs> uh, also adding, adding on to that, um, I think uh, I, I always saw Palumi as a, as a wrapper around Terraform or CloudFormation. So whatever you could do in CloudFormation, you can essentially do in Palumi. Uh, if, if that's any help to answering your question um yeah yeah no definitely yeah. i mean i mean uh we've been trying to use i mean i prefer uh 50 times one using volume than using terraform you, you end with uh, uh whenever your your infrastructure grows uh your terraform can grow a lot so, and I prefer always a programming language, which, which you can test properly using a programming language tools like PyTest and so on. So yeah, yeah, that's, that's, but I, I, I would love to, to, 
to know your journey <laughs> because maybe that's uh, i don't know because uh, dean is uh, chose or i don't know what's an introduction to to the field or did want you to to begin testing using different tools cool oh well with journey i'm not a, a person no, no worries no worries <laughs> no worries no worries thank you I think I think if, if you're interested in that journey, Philip, I suspect that probably what we need to do is get you in contact with one of the SRE team who's kind of right at the beginning of their journey. There's a couple of them about, you know, maybe, maybe the head of the SRE team, Alec Potter Dixon, might be a person, to, if you've kind of got that sort of, might be a person to talk to. Okay, um, so let me try sharing my screen now. Um, fingers crossed, right? Fingers crossed, and also I hope you won't get cold. Uh, yeah, I just hope it doesn't rain at this point. Uh, I suppose you can see my screen. Well, it's, it's still pixelated. Oh no. Um. Okay. It's like this, like. Okay, so um, I was a little bit about introducing myself. As I said, um, I'm an um, information security student um, and I'm a Python enthusiast. So now I want to say, why Python? Well, Python is very easy for people who are just starting to learn how to um, who are just starting to learn how to program. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of times, um, especially these days, InfoSec um, people are not developers. Uh, even though most of um, InfoSec people know how to code, um, they're not software developers. Um, and Python has many widely used libraries. And as one of my Python um, gurus said, Python forgives. So, um, you know, sometimes a lot of times you don't have to worry about confusing syntax. Sometimes if you miss out a variable, it will somehow magically leak anyway and the code will work even though it's not entirely, uh, you know, by the book. Um, a, Python can be used beautifully to introduce policy as code. Uh, and as Thomas has shown, it can also introduce infrastructure as code. Um, so therefore all your security policies, controls, everything can actually be kind of, instead of trying to physically, you know, through, um, you know, through other means, you can introduce it with code. Also, you can construct playbooks. So the playbooks can be like a set of procedures, as example, run this program, run this program, when you, um, whenever you do a certain action. So that way, you know, every action that is done can be standardized and therefore safe. So, I want to say a little bit about Voto3. Um, so it's basically, Voto3 is a library and it's a, basically an enabler um, for, Python, uh, for AWS. Um, developers use it a lot, but in our security point of view, we can use it a lot to automate tasks. Um, now, I will show you something that I've used it for. Now, have you ever heard um, of uh, the AWS uh, security uh, benchmark or the CIS Amazon Web Services Foundations document? You can use yes. the yes, no buttons again, guys. Yeah. Have you heard of it? Five people said yes. Okay, cool. So for us, when we started introducing it, um, it was painful. Uh, are you seeing my document that I'm showing it here? Yep. So as you see, it was very painful and we are a very small company. So a lot of these controls were mainly, you know, up to two people to introduce. Um, and there's a lot of them, like there's like all of these controls that are here. So the good news is, um, I started doing that manually, but then I, 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 we all gone mad by doing it manually. So we decided to do it programmatically. And the good thing, good news is you can do it with Boto3, but you can also do it with Pulumi because you can actually find um, 
uh, there's actually like various templates online that you can find to introduce it with Pulumi. Um, so that is basically why I decided to use it. Um, and this is, there's a lot, a lot of controls here that can be automated. Now I'm going to show you a little bit about Boto3. So as any, um, you would install it with pip install and then you have to configure it. Now that was for me a little bit difficult part to configure it because I didn't know how am I going to configure it from multiple accounts. Now, as you see in the screen here, you can see that um, there's a lot of, um, like in your credentials file, you can have a profile. Now here is default, um, but you can, any account that you have, uh, you can put in the credential file in this format and then use it with Boto3. So I'll show you later in my code how I call this profile. But what I've done is I've created a code that will make any program that I write um, will apply to all of the accounts because I needed to obviously apply the CS controls to all the accounts, not just one. And that was the most difficult part to do. So I'll show you a bit how we've done that. So let me go into, um, into this. So I've created several little um, kind of scripts. Um, one is how to create a user because obviously if you want to start using Boto3 um, you need um, a user that will be an IAM user that will be in every account and that you can use it for. So what I've done is I've got here as you see this is where I call my session and this is where I call the, the profile and then the profiles are actually here. Sorry just one sec. So the profiles are actually here. So in this perspective, you can put all of your accounts here. These are just some test accounts that I've set up for this, um, but you can basically put all your accounts here in this piece, and then you call it from your main code. So what I will do now is I will create in all these three accounts, I will create a, um, a user, I am user, with a certain policy, which I named Boto3 policy. Now, I know best practice is to um, assign users to groups rather than policies, um, but I still, you know, didn't get to that part, um, but I did get to this part, so I'll demo this. But Boto3 can be used also to um, attach you and create uh, groups to users. So you, the same thing I've done with policy here, it can be done with a group. So just to say a little bit quickly what I'm doing, so I'm going to call all of these that are in the list. So that list can be populated with all your accounts or just one account, depending on what you want to do. In that way, you don't have to change this code. And you will, basically I'm calling the client here. I've got some definitions, how to create a policy create a user password, um, attach a policy, create a, gen, a random password. This is just uh, for testing purposes here. Um, and then um, I'm calling these functions here in this bit. So what will happen now if I run it and let's hope that works. So before I run it, I will show you the um, uh, okay, my session expired, of course. Um, okay, I'm just going to stop my screen share for a second just to get logged back in. Sorry about this. Any questions so far? No. And is everything working? Um, like my voice and everything? Yeah, it actually got really clear. Yes, yeah. Okay, let's just hope it doesn't rain. Uh, 
but I cannot connect for some reason. Let me try again. I have to do my... Okay, I think I'm getting somewhere. One second. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go back to screen sharing now. Can everyone see where I am now? Yes, the management console. All right, cool. So let's go and do my um. I guess it's a little bit slow. All right, we have three users. Okay, so what I will do now is I will create this user because Obviously, to use Boto3, I need a user that will have a specific Boto3 policy with only the restrictions that I will need. Uh, sorry, permissions that I will need. I don't want to give my Boto3 admin permissions because, you know, we want to work on this least privilege. So, all right, fingers crossed. Create, a, let's, let's make it run. So in some some of these accounts, the policy already existed. So I've created an exception. You probably see it up um, to then just take the existing policy and attach it to the user. And it worked. And let's refresh it. And magic, it's here. Woohoo! Yeah, the first time I did it, it, it seemed like magic to me. Okay, and then, so now that I've created a user, what I really want to do is I want to, in the CIS benchmark, um, it recommends a lot of metrics and alarms. And of course, these are very important because if there is any kind of malicious and suspicious activity um, going on on your accounts, you really want to be notified about it. Um, in order to do that, you have to have like an SNS group where you're going to get your emails um, and all of that. So there's a, an extensive list of metrics and alarms. There's 14 of them, actually. So it would take a lot to do them manually. Um, so in, in this case, that's why I create, this is the first reason why I started doing this. So I've created, again, another code for this where, you know, I, again, spec have this snippet of code, which is kind of like a blessing because I can use this in conjunctions with my regions and profiles file. And I can put as many or as little accounts there as I want without putting anything in my code, without having to call a specific profile region in the main bit of code. Um, so yeah, so then I have, again, the functions which tell me about the, you know, to, to have a filter to create a log group because in every, um, if you're going to create metrics, you need log groups in every one of these accounts to, to put the filter, put the alarms, um, telling me the namespace, and then um, I call my functions right here at the end. As I said, again, I'm not a developer, so maybe my code in some aspects might look, you know, a bit messy or something or not by the book, but this is how I've done it. Um, so I will run this code again and show you what happened. And the good thing is about this code is it just updates. So for example, if you have a new account, then you, it, it won't even have, be a problem if these metrics are applied somewhere else. So they will, um, they will just update whatever it is. Okay, so let's run this. Okay, so see, it's run. It's running all of these metrics and alarms. 
and you see where it the log group already existed it just told me um log group already exists because as you see up i put like an exception um if this comes up obviously this all happened um through trial and error so i created a code it gave me an, an error and then i learned how to um create exceptions in python and i think that's a good way to learn it because you just you know you go about it you try and then it doesn't work and then you go to stack overflow and ask how to fix this and you, you find solutions um okay so i will go back to this and i will go to cloudwatch now and I will show you what happened. Okay, so we have here all the alarms that have been created based on the metrics that have been created, as you see right here. And these alarms actually were um, also all the specifications of the alarms were put in a um, Python dictionary so that the code could call them. Um, okay, so that was one thing um, that I used it for. I just want to go back to Boda 3 and I want to show you the documentation because it's famous, similar to um, Pulumi. It is actually really good. And most of the things that I've done I actually just used Boto3 documentation and then um, maybe for for loops, sometimes I needed the help of Stack Overflow, um, but mainly everything just comes from here. There's, there's, it's very good. There's some code examples even here where you can just see, you know, some examples, but then you have um, services right here. Okay, no, that wasn't it. Uh, it will be under user guides. Uh, no, sorry about this. One second. Yeah, there's a bit about error handling as well. How to catch exceptions, which proves to be quite useful. Um, right, here we are. So these are just the services that you can use with Boto3. So there is an, um, there was a question about S3 bucket, for example, if you can encrypt it. So you can do that, I think, with Boto3. Um, there's a lot of things that can be done here. So you can create a bucket, delete bucket, um, get bucket encryption, that's probably the answer to that question. Okay, so this just gets it. Um, but I'm pretty sure there's going to be ways to activate at least a default one that you can do via the console. Um, the, just to answer that question, I always use the client option because I just found it easier. So, Delete bucket encryption. There's a uh, put bucket encryption. Oh, that will be it then. Yeah, put bucket encryption would be it. Um, usually put means to do something. Yeah, so you can do that too. So as you see, everything that you can do through the console you can actually do it easily through Boto3. Um, I'm just going to come back to the presentation. Um, so yeah, so I've given you a little bit of kind of um, an idea of what you can use it as and a little demo. These are, I know these are quite basic for people who are a bit more advanced, but I just wanted to show um, how there's multiple ways of automating tasks with Boto3. Um, these are just some ideas that can be done. 
Um, but I also wanted to say there's also um, one of my colleagues who is also a beginner in Python. Um, he's also done something with AW keys rotation. So I'm going to show you his code. So he didn't create a for loop yet. So he's not at that stage, but I'm just going to show you um, that, you know, even without that. So basically what this code does is because according to the AWS benchmark, um, security benchmark, you need to, um, you really need to change the um, access keys every 90 days, which is a lot of work um, for whoever takes that task. Um, and a lot of times these keys are actually incorporated in some pipelines or GitHub, GitHub actions. So if you just go randomly change them through the console, you can easily break something and then you have angry developers on your back. So he created, my colleague created this code, which will basically rotate the access keys. Um, they will put it in GitHub secrets and then from GitHub secrets, it will be introduced into pipelines. So this is basically the, the code, how it looks like. Um, because he changed teams, it's um, it's going to be on me to kind of um, tidy it up. But just to give you an idea, so, you know, as you see here, you know, it all goes into GitHub secrets and then it will be pulled into the pipeline and also it will go into JIRA. So we'll get a JIRA ticket saying that the keys were rotated and then everyone is happy. Um, so that's also another example how we can use um, Python to automate our tasks. Um, and then let me go back. Um, so another thing is cloud formation. So let me show you in the documentation. Because a lot of, uh, similar to Pulumi, you can actually automate a lot of things in cloud formation and there's also um i might even i'm not sure um there is there is like a yaml template that you can find online um i don't know thomas i sent you a link i think for that template um for the aws benchmark for that yaml um yep, I'll, i can uh i can quickly <laughs> drop, drop the url yeah, if you could drop it into um, the chat and then everyone can, I can actually open it just to kind of say, because then you could use that YAML document as a template. And then you could even use um, the cloud formation bit of Boto3 to create the whole benchmark all at once without even uh, going through um, the same thing that I did. Uh, let me see. Is it in the chat? Not yet. Yep, I popped in the chat now. Oh right, no, cool. sorry. <laughs> uh, there we go. Cool. I'm just gonna open it. Yeah. So this is actually um, a whole YAML document that you can use as a template for cloud formation for the whole AWS benchmark. So that will kind of cover all the security tasks that you need to do in AWS. And there you can find, there is, um, Azure has also an API to use um, for um, security. Um, I forgot the name, but um, you can easily just look it up. Um, but it's not really developed yet. Um, there isn't so much documentation and all it's it's very early stages. So if anyone um, actually here knows Python really well, it's an open source. So, um, you know, it's a way to contribute to the community as well. Um, so as I wanted to mention the cloud formation bit. So if you look in the documentation, there's also cloud formation. So I'm, I'm really slow because I'm not even working with a mouse. Yeah. So we have the cloud formation bit um, where we can actually create a stack. 
this also helps i don't know if anyone uses datadog but um we were you know we were introducing a datadog sock to kind of pull all our logs into um into datadog and one of the main bits was also creating um a cloud stack in every single account that we had um to kind of create a lambda function and link datadog with aws but it was also very very um slow and painful to do but i i discovered this only later that you can also create a stack so it could have also all that been done programmatically and just applied to the whole um to all the accounts and all the regions all at once with this so as you see so you have a place here for the template and then you have parameters inside the template that you call here um so yeah so that's pretty much it about our automation with photo 3 it's the last session of the summit so we're not going to um do long uh, i just wanted this to be kind of more of a kind of you know informative session where i can tell you you know look you know you can do a few things and you can make your life easier especially if you're working in small teams in small in a small company um there are tools that are out there and you don't really need to be a proper python master to start using them and it is quite a good and fun way to learn python as well um okay has yeah. anyone got any questions yeah, any questions hi petra it's greg hi i was very interested you, you're talking about you know you're going out and you're talking you know stack overflow etc who have you been talking to with your python help getting help on python within the company um you know to learn how to do python i asked i have a couple of colleagues um from my university so yeah. I have been like asking, um, you know, just to, especially for for loops, um, you know, I wasn't really sure where to start. So they gave me like some basic kind of, um, I'll, 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 I'll tell you that with Iglas, we'll talk to Angus. Um, he basically, well, actually, the, he really, he, he really actually, loves doing helping people. Yeah. That's, that's really, um, actually that's good that you pointed out because, he has really helped me get through the first bit where I was um, wondering how am I going to call a profile to start even a session. And this is where I asked Angus and he really helped me. And that was a really big step for me because I was ready to give up because I just couldn't call a session, whatever I did, and, you know, from the instruction documentation didn't work. So if, you know, if anyone wants to try um, Boto3 and start doing it, I, you know, I, please reach out to me and I can help with that because a lot of times you get tangled up and you don't really know how to apply all your you know metrics and stuff to all the accounts and how to start a session in all the accounts at once um, and that was the little bit at the beginning that's what Angus actually showed me so um, just keep just I mean I'll just say just if you've got other stuff you kind of do you're struggling is just just go go, go and pester him to do it because it, you know it's something that he really like it, it's it's kind of one of the things he actually does as a hobby is working on some of the Python forums to help people out so oh that's really to... great that's really good to know actually because uh it's it's uh, sometimes I would get stuck for like hours and hours and you would think like oh my god I haven't done anything um <laughs> that's really actually good to know thank you very much for that Greg Any other questions? I have to say, I am a really, really new beginner into coding. I have not coded much. So you two are really inspiring from that regard. Really well done. Oh, thank you. Um, it's, uh, you know, I'm really glad because that's what I wanted to do is actually, you know, inspire people to go out and do it because sometimes when you start learning Python and you, you, you know, you just list, you, you go through all the basics and you're like, why do I even do this? Like, when am I going to need this? How am I going to ever use this in real life? So for me, I got really demotivated initially when I started it. But when I discovered this, I realized that I can actually automate a lot of my tasks with it that was such a good incentive to learn and 
it, it's you know it's it's a really great journey so i highly recommend it thank you i kind of thought it was i kind of, oh, sorry. I kind of thought it was cool that um you can see um sort of almost like a documentation with um with the Bodo 3, you can see the different commands and things you can run and um, actually pretty much just memorize them by using using that. Yeah, you don't even need to memorize them. You can always go back to them. Like, that's what I've done. Like, I've, you know, I've kind of learned, you know, how to, def you, know, you know, put define functions and, and call them. And then later, I was, all I was doing is I was going back to documentation and, and just pulling everything from there. So it's great. It's really good. And it's awesome. Good. Any questions, comments? Recommendations? I, 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 can, I can tell you that uh, being a CISOM Python programmer, uh, it's the language that you, you would like to use for everything right now. I mean, it's, it's the one that you can use to connect all the dots between different products and all the clouds is going to take you, uh, yeah, really where you get, you want to get, yeah. So yeah, it's, it's a good choice. Yeah, thank you, Felipe. And I really like how it looks, like when I compare it to um, other kind of languages, um, I just mainly, you know, when I look at JavaScript or um, yeah, no. C sharp. It just looks messy, but Python looks nice and clean, and it's it's a really great great um, language for beginners. Definitely, and you can you can go up the way to professional, so no worries. You can get everything from the language, so it's a yeah. good tool, a good choice from the beginning to to getting very professional. Yeah, yeah. It's it's and it's a really exciting journey. So I'm I'm looking forward to exploring it further. Yeah, makes sense. I like how you approach the project, and actually, you have you seem to have a very good um, head on your shoulders as far as your your learning experience and your your position in the field. But at the same time, you're progressing in a in a very solid and actually. Um, Rather, Best. somewhat amazing, I guess. Uh, what's the word for it? Um, She's a doctor, for God's Inspiring, God. inspiring <laughs> way. Yeah, so it's, it's inspiring. So I guess that's. You know, I'm really happy I managed to inspire, but I must say, you know, um, I did have people kind of mentoring me and I'm really grateful for that. And I'm really grateful that Greg pointed out that I can, you know, always go to Angus uh, for my company. So it's always good, you know, it's good to do things on your own and troubleshoot, but also when you get really stuck, it's also good to ask. Um, I would definitely recommend that as a way, like troubleshoot by yourself, but if you're really stuck, then just ask someone for help and you'll be amazed at what you can learn. Uh, to a large extent, a lot of what I've learned and done, I mean, yeah, I've, I've used different learning tools and, um, you know, things like that. But, you know, I've had to work through and figure out for my, myself, or like, maybe have a little help here and there from different resources online. But um, as far as in person, I'm somewhat of a hermit, I guess you could say. <laughs> now you're part of this community, Wallaby, and you can ask many things to many people. Yeah. So I forgot to mention, I didn't get a chance because um, it was a bit hectic with all the summit and things. I didn't get a chance to put everything on GitHub and make sure that there's, you know, that it's also safe to be there for open source. But I am planning to do that. But if in the meantime, if I don't put it on GitHub yet, please reach out to me and I'm happy to share the scripts. Um, even just parts of the scripts, like if you want to ask about like a specific functionality of the script, like how do I apply this function to all the accounts, which was kind of like, you know, the, the revelation to me. Um, even if it's just that, then just please reach out and I'm happy to help. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Any, any more for any more? I'm really interested in learning more about the, uh, about your, uh, your thesis. That's, oh. that's, 
I'm I'm interested in learning more about that. That's a that's another um, that's an another journey into Python as well because uh, I've used um, Scikit-Learn, but this for that you use Jupyter Notebooks, um, and I used the Python library Scikit-Learn and Pandas, which I found it was much easier for me to do machine learning than um, actually do proper like scripting. Um, I was actually kind of, you know, for, for a lot of times I find that um, people don't get into machine learning because they're really scared of the big math that's behind it. Because whenever you start reading the books, you start to get this math and all these, um, num you know, all these definitions. But actually, when you start doing it in practice, especially if you have a bit of a scientific background where you kind of approach the problem from a scientific point of view, um, actually, it's not that terrifying. So for me, actually learning to do Jupyter Notebooks and the Scikit-Learn um, library was easier than trying to do all of this BOTO3 scripting and automation. So um, I would definitely recommend to people who already know some Python to try and do some machine learning because it can be such an exciting and um, and great experience too. And also Scikit-Learn has a great documentation. So it, it's, it's a great journey too. I can go a little bit Thank off you. topic. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, not necessarily or, or, or completely off topic. Because obviously Petra and Wallaby, you both got an interest in machine learning. And it's kind of something I know is kind of coming the way that I've gotten really got a little complete, really just kind of layman's knowledge of it. Where would you say I should start? Any good book reads or part or, or papers that would be a good place to start to kind of get a bit more of an in-depth into machine well, learning? Well, I would say um depends. Like if you want to actually start you know doing it like you know try and go and hands-on like do it i would actually say go to the scikit learn library mm. and there is stack overflow has so many solutions for machine learning and there's so many blogs because if you go to books like i started with books and then again i had some people who, who were teaching me and it really helped actually because when i started to look into the books they were showing so much math um and it, it was terrifying but then you know the, i had people tell me like just forget about this you won't even <laughs> like for now yeah yeah they just said forget about the math you will learn about the math as you use every alg algorithm you will go back to the math and then you'll be like ah that's how it works hmm. so just use it first um but also i would say pandas because pandas is necessary to kind of wrangle your data so you need to know how to wrangle the data so i would say get acquainted with these two pandas and scikit learn and what and how then, do you spell the first one sorry yeah. i think the accent might be making that hard uh panda like in the chat psychic oh, and oh yeah i know i know it's it's i didn't know how to pronounce it either until i uh i, I actually didn't understand the syllables because of the accent <laughs> I, actually, I, I really hope that i've uh well, um, I'm going to double check the spelling to be uh, to be on the safe side. Just one second. Okay, I managed to spell it correctly. Now I can post. Oops, I um sent it only to Didar. Okay. <laughs> I've done that. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Thank wow. you. Okay. And there is also a book that also goes um, approaches the problem from a very very practical level. Um, but I can have a look. I'm not. I don't think it's um, it's here on this computer. I, I think I have it in a different computer. But if you reach out to me um, after the session, I'm happy to send you the book, Greg. Um, yeah. And Wallaby as well, uh, if you're interested, it's a really good book because it's also very practical. It doesn't go too much into math. Um, it's just, just very, very practical. Yeah. So I'd say I, I'm quite interested in the principles and being able to apply it. I have to say the math is going to turn me cold. So uh, <laughs> Yeah. 
I think I think what's yeah. what has been most interesting to me um, is looking at um, our adversarial networks and actually reading the um, the scholarly journals about them, the um, white papers and stuff. It's that's been yeah, they're very really fascinating, but they're quite hard. That that's like very very that's quite advanced. So um, I think I would say start with scikit learn and machine learning. Um, and and then you move on to neural networks and then you move on to something like adversarial neural networks but i think it's all doable like if you really put your head into it i think you can become quite solid in machine learning with it like six months or a, a year even it took me about kind of four months to get to get where i'm now um but i think i'm not still like a solid master in it yet i still have to ask stack over stack overflow for a lot of questions but the good thing is there is a lot of stuff in stack overflow for machine learning it's really everything is out there okay thank you very much yeah no worries but yeah feel free to reach out i'm happy to like even show you some of my jupyter notebooks and um just show you how to start like just to practically how to you know, use an algorithm and train it and uh, get some results. So, yeah, yeah. happy to help. Okay, thank you. Uh, I, this might be weird, but I didn't really find that um, the, uh, the white papers were actually that hard to get into. You just don't focus right away on the math. Yeah. Um, and if you have some sort of background and, you know, if you have some sort of technical background that's going to actually help you to understand these kinds of papers, then it, it's not that hard to get into. Um, and then the diagrams help a lot, but you really have to start with what you're actually interested in, especially like if it's if it's something that hits you and like you know, but not like in a security way, but like <laughs> something that that hits you as like oh wow this is fascinating. You're going to learn a lot more from it than if you're than if you're trying to dig through things you know that are going to be putting you to sleep so yeah and there's um, there's also i don't know if anyone heard about um again we're going a bit off topic but um if anyone heard of kaggle that is like um online um they have competitions in machine learning because companies put them out um but the good thing about kaggle is you can find so many data sets and so many examples um of like how they use these data sets that you can learn so much from it there are people who actually educated themselves in machine learning purely based on kaggle and became masters within like six months just because they were doing kaggle for like 10 hours a day so it's actually a really good platform to um get yourself into machine learning i mean i mean i could say that my interest comes through is because one of the things that and partly because one of the companies I used to work for I used to produce it is the World Quality Report. And there was a yearly report on what the trends in software testing. And there was a machine learning kept getting mentioned, but nobody was actually saying how they were doing it, how they were deploying it. And that's kind of why that's what mm -hmm. kind of grabs my interest is how to, how to actually use machine learning and testing. Yeah, I think it's, a, it's one of those things that it's like the word algorithm. You know, you use it to say, a bunch of stuff that you don't want to have to explain so that you can actually say something else you know what i mean like there's a lot of that kind of stuff that happens there's a i mean let's face it you know we all work work, work in it there's a huge amount of um obfuscation to try and deny people entry into the cost of the conversation by trying to appear superior i mean that's a, that's a that's an it trend as well as an academic trend and sorry for the bit of the rant but um no, that's something we kind of need to try and stamp out. I, I agree. Agile, agile was like really confusing because people kept using it in different ways that were like, what? And then uh, once I actually came to understand what it was, I was like, oh, really? <laughs> like, that's, what, that's what kept me from actually understanding these other things that they were talking about. Yeah. I, I get those now. <laughs> my, my, my favorite for that was DevOps. Um, because when that when that really talked about it, and when you actually start reading something, you get to uh, you read the DevOps handbook because it's the best thing to explain it. You go, ah, oh, this is a load of principles that've been around for a long time. They've just been combined in a really interesting way. 
and that, that makes sense. I, I don't, I kind of, I guess, thought that that was already kind of the core of a lot of things. I, I didn't even consider it as being its own um, area you know, until I actually encountered it as such. And I was like, it, it's kind of weird because that, that, that should be, I mean, yeah, it's a, it's a move from how it used to be, but I kind of thought that it had like at least gained enough traction that it didn't really have to have a name. Uh, uh, it's just kind of one of those things of again, it's, it, it's years of terminology to try and bar people, but and then you have to go and find out what it is. And it's, oh, yeah, these are things we already know. It's just they've just been combined. Right. Yeah. And we need communities like this one so we can share and teach each other. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I think um, this kind of kind of communities is also um, lacking in medicine, for example, because. Um, even more in medicine, people try and always use fancy words to kind of deter people from coming into the field. And um, even though there is knowledge sharing, um, it isn't su in such a friendly basis. There's always people who are like um, higher up in the hierarchy and, you know, expect other people to know. And if they don't, they look down on them. So I think, you know, this kind of friendly sharing and, you know, round tables and listening to everyone's opinions of i think a lot of things like that can be um taken from it and put into medicine I, I i used to use this expression when i used to do a lot of work in government circles and i suspect what you're talking about there in in the health service is the same thing i used to call it prejudice by grade yeah <laughs> that pretty much sums it up Okay, so on that note, I want to stop the recording, but we can uh, continue the discussion. Mm -hmm. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> Any final words for the recording? Um, I just want to say thank you, everyone, for being here. And I hope I managed to get you inspired to use uh, more Python and get onto that exciting Python journey. And thank you, Thomas, for coming and presenting with me about Pulumi on such a short notice. No worries, anytime. And you both did great. Thank you.